This is Topics in Ring Theory by Barche. This is a book on ring theory. It's an X library book or EX library. You can see here it was at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs at one point. So for some reason it was discarded from the library. Sometimes they'll say that. They'll say discarded on the inside. It's like a stamp. Bound by American Bindery, Topeka, Topeka Kansas. There's no uh, library card spot. Oh, here it is. Withdrawn. Yeah, I wonder why. Why did they get rid of this book? What did it do to merit withdrawal? Well, look, someone checked it out maybe once in 2000, December 21st. It's an old book. This volume was printed directly from a typescript prepared by the author who takes full responsibility for its content and appearance. The publisher has not performed his usual functions of reviewing, editing, typesetting, and proofreading the material prior to publication. Oh, the publisher fully endorses this informal and quick method of publishing lecture notes at a moderate price. And he wishes to thank the author for preparing the material for publication. It's got to smell it here. So, Jacob Barche, Northeastern University, Topics and Ring Theory, 1969. Wow, wow, that was a long time ago, right? That was during the uh, Vietnam War, right? Wasn't there a war? The Vietnam War was happening in that era when Barche, Jacob Barche from Northeastern University wrote this book called Topics in Ring Theory, which is in our hands now. And the cool thing is like, this is from 19, this is actually, you know, it's not like on the internet, it's physical. It makes it seem more real. This book is an outgrowth of a one quarter first year graduate course that I taught at Northeastern University in 1966 and 1967. Okay. Okay. Cool, so the lectures were based on his teacher, probably, Doc Sang Rim at Brandeis University, 61 to 62. Self-contained, uh-huh. All right, let's, 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 let's jump into it. Let's see what, what he's got. And then, preliminary terminology and examples. Ideals and residue rings. Rings of quotients and localization. Unique factorization domains. Modules and exact sequences, Netherian rings and modules, Dedi kind domains, Artin rings and modules, semi simple rings. So, yes, it literally is uh, specific topics in ring theory. And some, by the way, some of these topics, you see them in other books. Like, I've seen these in other books, like Netherian rings. I, I studied those a lot as an undergrad, actually. And, like, you see these in other books. Um, localization, you see them in a lot of, like, they don't, they're not in every abstract algebra book but you do see them in other books. So seeing a book like this, you can, you can clearly see like, oh yeah, these are specialized topics. Oh, Zorn's Lemma, what's this? Preliminary terminology and examples. We begin with a brief discussion of just two notions from set theory. The first is that of an equivalence relation on a set and its associated decomposition. The second is Zorn's Lemma. So it goes through and reviews uh, some set theoretic things. Here's some definitions. You've probably seen these. Let f from a to b be a mapping, map uh, function from a set a to a set b. Then f is said to be surjective or onto if for any b and b there exists an a and a such as f of a equals b. Yep, that's perfect, right? Perfect. And then this is all, it's all very good, um, very clear. Uh, let's look at the definition of a group. A group is a non-empty set G on which is defined by, okay, right? Closure law, associative law, yep. All very good, and he just, he just goes through and just defines, just defines a bunch of stuff, right? Goes through and defines tons of mathematics here for us, which is great, right? This is awesome. He defines a ring here. <clears throat> More things here, right? Ring with unit, division ring, commutative ring with unit, field, ring homomorphism. All oh, these are fun. Maybe you've never seen these. Uh, epimorphism is a is a group of ring homomorphism that is uh, surjective or onto, and a monomorphism is a group or ring homomorphism that is injective or, or one to one. 
And an isomorphism is a group or ring, homo group or ring homomorphism that is uh, bijective or that is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So, right, because surjective is the same thing as onto, injective is the same thing as one-to-one, -one. and bijective, well, when you say there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, that typically means bijective. So that's how people use it usually. Yeah, it's just it's just a solid book. It's like it's like notes, basically, right? You do have some exercises here, you see. So he does put some exercises here in. But I don't I don't think there's answers. I mean I doubt it. These books usually don't have answers. There's a bibliography. Yeah, there's always a bibliography. <laughs> no. No answers. I'm laughing because earlier I was looking at a book and I'm, I'm not kidding, the bibliography was like this thick. No, it was like, it was like, no, it was like, it was like this thick. And it was just a bibliography, but it had like no answers. So I was like, oh my God, it's all this time on the bibliography, but they couldn't hook us up with some answers. Ideals and residue rings. So you start by defining a left ideal. Okay, it's a non-empty subset of A such that if you have A, B, and A, A minus B is an A. Yeah, see this condition here guarantees that it's a subgroup of the ring as a group, because the ring is also a group, right, um, under addition, right, because the ring has two operations, right? So this, this first condition here, uh, if it's non-empty and it has this condition, that, that's a subgroup criteria from group theory, so sometimes this is defined differently. And then a right ideal is very similar, and then a two-sided ideal is just a left and a right ideal. Yeah, this is a really good book. It's a really good book. It's really clear. It's to the point. Um, yeah, I like this book a lot. Topics in Ring Theory. Um, this book is probably extremely rare because I don't think it's popular at all. I mean, there might be some copies, but there's probably not a lot. So I will look, and if I can find any, I will leave a link in the description. I'll call Maximal. A set of two-sided ideals, A1 through AN, is, is called comaximal. Yeah. Yeah, I remember doing a problem with comaximal ideals. <clears throat> it was actually really easy, uh, but it took me forever. Rings of quotients and localization. Yeah, localization is cool. This is something I actually studied uh, as an undergrad because I did an independent uh, study in commutative algebra with a professor and it was really fun. And I remember learning about localization. I didn't learn about it in this book. I learned about it in, I don't have it here. Yeah, I thought I had it here. I don't have it here anymore. In Lansky's book, uh, Charles Lansky has a really good book on abstract algebra and he's got a good, good section on, um, that's why I learned about localization from, from that particular book. So it's funny how you remember certain things like that, specific things. It's really weird. Unique factorization domains. This is something that you do see in a lot of other abstract algebra books as well. An integral domain R is called a Euclidean domain if there exists a function d from R into the integer satisfying these properties here. d of a is greater than d of 0 for all 0 is not equal to a. For any a, b, and r, b not zero, there exist elements q and r such that a equals q, b plus r. Yep. It's basically the division algorithm, right? You're, you're probably used to seeing this uh, for integers, so you can generalize that to other things, which is really cool. That's one of the things about abstract algebra, right, is that that's what it is in some sense. I mean, everything comes from examples. You have a lot of examples and they have similar properties and you generalize that and then you study that generalization as its own thing. And then from that sometimes you can say things about the examples too. It's interesting. Not every irreducible is prime. Every principal ideal domain is a unique factorization domain. I wonder if I, I might have a video on that. I don't know. I'd have to, I, oh, Eisenstein's criterion. I think I have some videos on that. I should have one or two. I should do some more of this stuff. Dedekind domains, or Dedekind. I never know if I'm saying it right. 
Artin rings and modules. Semi-simple rings. I smell this. Ah, smells amazing. Anyways, hey, if you want to learn abstract algebra, I actually have a course on abstract algebra. Um, it's on Udemy, but if you get it, just please use my links from my website because it helps me greatly and I lowered the price. And my website's mathsorcerer.com or uh, freemathbits.com, either of those, same website. Or you can use the links from the description of any of my videos. And yeah, check it out. I've got courses on other stuff too besides abstract algebra, like calculus, trig, advanced calculus, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, this is, this is an interesting book. I'll look for it. If I can find it, I will leave a link in the description. Take care.